All right, what's up, college football fans, quarterback fans? Welcome to another QB Spotlight video. This video, we're talking about Arkansas quarterback KJ Jefferson. We're talking about his keys to success against this LSU defense coming up this week. We're going to talk about what he needs to do to, to you know, lead Arkansas to potentially pull off the upset. But we'll also talk about the LSU defense and what maybe we can expect for them as well. And if this is your first time tuning in, one, thank you. Two, we're just a big quarterback hub. We talk all things quarterback, specifically the college quarterback position. We'll have these game previews. We also have recaps. We have uh, live shows throughout the week. So uh, we, we just kind of preview all the quarterbacks, recap quarterbacks. We also will have quarterbacks on the podcast, current and former uh, guys, and kind of give their experiences. So just a big quarterback hub. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing and following us along. But today, KJ Jefferson, how can Arkansas bounce back from the loss against BYU? How can the offense get on track? How can the, uh, the, the quarterback position kind of get on track? How can the passing game get on track? Just kind of everything, right? Right. What needs to happen against LSU's defense? Well, well first, let's talk about LSU's defense, because I think we've seen a few different sides of LSU's defense. Week one, we saw them get exposed, specifically their back seven, right? Specifically um, the, the, the their DBs. A lot of transfers, they were gelling together, and they faced a Florida State team that has one of the best wide receivers core, one of the best wide receiver rooms in the nation. They got exposed, especially in the second half. Uh, week two, they played Grambling, FCS, whatever. This previous week, this past week, against Mississippi State, they absolutely dominated. Like, there is nothing Mississippi State's offense could do. Mississippi State, Will Rogers, quarterback, the quarterback for Mississippi State, Will Rogers, was 11 of 28 for 103 yards. They had under 100 yards rushing, too, and it wasn't like LSU's defense was just, like, sitting in the house getting mad pressure on them. They did have four sacks against Rogers, so they, they did get to him when they, when, when, they, when they wanted to, when they tried, but they only had nine total pressures, meaning hurries, hits, sacks, all combined. They only had nine out of those 28 attempts, essentially, um, or a little bit more if you include the sacks. So they just kind of challenged Mississippi State to beat them, and they weren't able to. The, the receivers, receivers weren't able to get open. They weren't able to run the ball. And offensively, they weren't able just to pass the ball at all, right? So Mississippi State's offense can never get into rhythm. LSU's defense was gelling a little bit more than they were in week one. Now, Mississippi State's offense I don't think is, is, is probably very good this year. Uh, they're trying to figure things out. But with that said, LSU still dominated their offense. So LSU's defense looked a lot better in week three. I'm still kind of up in the air of like what their true identity is, what they're trying to do defensively. But regardless, improvements have been made since since week one. So KJ Jefferson, what if you're KJ Jefferson, if you're Arkansas's offense, what do you need to do to have success against this 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 defense? What do you need to do to to pull off the upset? Last time I saw was it like an 18 point favorite LSU was something along those lines uh so let's talk about these keys for KJ I think there's like three or four of them I, I, I want to hit on and if you've watched these videos before th then you're used to us putting a bunch of film breakdowns on and kind of breaking down the film and while we love to do that we're just probably not able to continue to do that just because the 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 game footage the broadcast footage uh one isn't great quality so it's hard to really get our point across and then two uh YouTube doesn't really like when we're putting on videos and so we don't have the all 22 right now so it's been a little challenging so hopefully we can get these points across and talk these keys without using the film but number one i think if you're kj i think you have to improve versus pressure even though lsu didn't get a ton of pressure against mississippi state last week when they did they were successful and maybe they're going to try to scheme up some more pressure against arkansas kj was zero of five against pressure versus byu with one interception now i didn't really take into consideration the kent state game and the western carolina game again fcs and a very low tier uh fbs school but against byu they didn't complete one pass against pressure and that and his interception was against pressure so if you're lsu you're probably going to try to get pressure you probably want to get pressure if you're lsu and if you're arkansas you got to find a way to be better against pressure I think it's almost like going back to the roots, essentially, which we'll get to. So improve against pressure. How do you go about improving against pressure? Well, I think I think you want to rely more on the play action game. I think that's number one. That's a big key for me is, is use utilize the play action. L, uh, Arkansas had some success run the ball. Now, I know they had some offensive line issues. That's a big talking point right now. I get it. But they had some success running the ball against BYU. And I think you need to, to utilize that play action because they only had six attempts off play action. In a passing or in an offense like Dan Eno's where you, you're featuring the run, I think a lot of your passing plays should be off play action or more than six out of your what, 38 attempts, whatever it was. Uh, so I, I think getting the play action and, and using that early, right? Like... Um, like last year's offense, you, using the RPO with Bryles, like you basically have a play action or a fake like every first and second down. So there's a lot of of the ability to get the defense out of position with play action, get the quarterback comfortable with play action. Sometimes just straight dropbacks can be tough for a quarterback, especially if they know you're passing. 
right? Like in an offense like Dan Enos, if you don't have that fake to the running back, then they just know you're passing, right? So they're able to adjust accordingly. So I would get some play action early and often. Um, I think I think that can help get the quarterback into a rhythm. I think you get back to that strength. KJ is so used to the play actions. KJ is so used to trying to get defenders out of position pre-snap or right when the ball is, is high, right? So I'm trying to utilize some play action. That's going to, one, slow down pass rush if LSU does try to try to get some pressure. It's going to, two, help out the offensive line. It's going to help out offensive linemen with issues. The play action can be very favorable towards offensive linemen because the ball can get out quickly. It can it can confuse a defense, and the defense has several different things going on. So number one, I think more play action attempts. Again, only six against BYU. I think that number needs to be up. Number two, I think you want some more downfield throws in this offense. There weren't, there weren't a ton of downfield throws. If you look at KJ's numbers, they're kind of mediocre, right, uh, against BYU. There are some good things, some bad things. They, they, they just weren't in rhythm, though. That's the biggest thing. I think getting some downfield throws can definitely help that. Out of his 36 attempts, okay, it's 36, not 38. I apologize. Out of his 36 attempts, only 13 attempts were past 10 yards. Only 13 attempts were thrown. Excuse me. Only 13 attempts were, were 10 yards or more in the air, and probably what? Not half, but at least three, four or so of those attempts from that last drive when they were driving, right? So I think you need more shots downfield. He was three or four on throw on balls that were 20 plus yards in the air. That's pretty good, right? Three or four completing some deep balls. He was seven of nine in the kind of that intermediate range, um, that intermediate intermediate range throws, if you throw is between 10 and 19 yards. So they had some success pushing the ball downfield, right? That, that, that gives them 10 of 13 on throws, 10 or more yards down the down the field. But they just didn't take a bunch of them. Um, so I, I think you need to take more of those type of throws, right? Again, only 13 attempts were past 10 yards of his 36 attempts. So the, the, the defense is able to kind of recognize what's going on. They're not really having to defend the deep shots. But you saw when the deep shots are taken, they were completed. Now, if you're in an RPO scheme, I think it's okay to have uh, all these underneath throws, right? Because you have all these screens, these dump offs to the tight ends, these kind of like options to run slash throw screen to the receiver. So I think it's okay, but Enos' offense is a lot different than, than just the RPO scheme, right? So again, so far, utilize the play action more, take some more downfield throws, and then and I, I'm going to pronounce this guy's name wrong. Arkansas fans can correct me. But, man, number nine for Arkansas is a mismatch. Luke, is it Haas? Haas? I, I watched the game on mute this past weekend. But number nine is a mismatch. I want to try to utilize him somehow, some way. Can we get into a rhythm utilizing him? Can can, can a linebacker guard him one-on-one? -on -one? Can we split him out wide? Like, you saw him really affect the game, I thought. He had, like, what, four catches for 70-something yards. So I would utilize him a little bit more. I think number nine – sorry, I got a flag coming in here. I think number nine can, can, can be a problem. So I would utilize him. Find some mismatches if you can. And the last thing, and I've talked to some Arkansas fans about this before, but you got to let KJ be KJ. You can't force any quarterback into, into a system. you got to find the system that works really well. So I think you got to let KJ be KJ. And what does that mean? I don't know. It just means getting him comfortable. If you're the offensive play caller, if you're the offensive, uh, someone in the offensive staff room, you just got to let KJ be KJ. Whatever you got to do to get him comfortable and get him going. Because if you get him going, if you get him comfortable, then you have one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC and you have a chance to pull up this upset. Um, but but if he's not comfortable, he's not going, if, if we're trying to force something on him, then it's going to be tough for any quarterback, right? So I, I think you got to let KJ be KJ, whatever that looks like, right? But again, this LSU defense, I still think it's kind of up in the air. I still think you saw some good things, but you also saw some ways you can expose them. And so if you're if you're the if you're the Arkansas offense, you you don't just assume that they're going to get pressure, but I think they're probably they're probably going to try to get pressure on you if you're Arkansas. So you need to find ways to be improved against pressure. And how do you do that? Well, I think you utilize the play action that gets the quarterback uh, comfortable, protects the offensive line, and it helps with some vertical shots that I think you can take more of. And then you're able to, to hopefully find some mismatches, utilize number nine, and just let KJ be KJ. So again, those are the overall themes, overall takeaways for what we think the keys are for KJ against LSU. But any Arkansas fan or just, just college football fan in general, maybe an LSU fan, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think one KJ needs to do? Or if you're LSU, what do you think you need to do to stop KJ? And then we obviously only really talked about KJ. Now, so many things are involved in winning this game. We could talk way more about the offensive line, more about the running game, more about the defense. So we obviously didn't talk about those factors or those keys. But if you have any takes on that, please let us know in the comments below and just give us your overall thoughts the game and, and of course if, if you have more keys on kj let us know that as well but as always sincerely thank you for watching it means a lot sorry there's no breakdown no film video here uh we'll, we'll try to continue to put out some some good content but feel free to, to like 
share, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help. We'll see you next time. Peace.